Welcome to this video tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Bones Made Translator as an aid in Ableton to uh, do some MIDI looping uh, within the clip view. So we're going to start off in Bones. I'm going to show you that I have both my Axiom 61, which is my controller I'm using as the input, and Virtual MIDI Translator 1 as the output. Uh, and those are in the MIDI boards mode. Then you go to the router, and you'll also see that the Axiom 61 is routed to send its signal into Ohm's MIDI Translator 1. So I hit OK, hit OK. Down here, you'll see that it's receiving my keys, and it's routing out. Now if I what translating means is here's, a, here's the only translator I have set up. And this changes this specific pad to what it does is it reads the pad, takes that pad, and turns it into the keystroke shift Q, delete Q. And I'll show you how to build that and why it says Q and Q. So you have to have a preset here. This one's a preset. Then you create a new translator call it whatever you want. <clears throat> Again, try to stay organized as the project gets bigger. Uh, I capture the MIDI and I press this button. There you go. Hit read it. Hit note on on channel 12. G6 is the note and the velocity doesn't matter. And then outgoing type, I pick keystroke emulation. Now, in here, I'm going to hit hold shift and press Q. And then I'm going to press delete. And then I'm going to press Q without shift. And that's my keystroke sequence to clear my MIDI clip. And I'll show you how to set that up. Once that's saved, I can hit close. You see it's here. This you have to open uh, before you open Ableton Live. So then I've already opened Ableton Live to save time. Um, the other thing is instead of routing from my Axiom, I'm getting my signal from a channel called Bums MIDI Translator now, but it's comparable, okay? And it comes to, we come to find that you don't really need an input for this first channel because you're ghosting it on the second channel. But, so what we're going to do is first, uh, I've assigned these transport controls to launch different clips for the envelopes. So I'll make a couple of those real fast to show you how. It's already on my cutoff parameter, which is nice. So I'll make a long one. I'll make it quantization none, trigger legato. And I'm gonna name it ENV clip one. And then my second one, duplicate that, and I'll do a reverse of that, and then rename to two, that kind of thing. Half the length, and make it forward again. And I duplicate that one, rename it four. Okay, so you get the idea. I think four will be sufficient and we'll have a, a tight enough wobble from this. Okay, so this should be interesting. Now, you'll see when I trigger these, it activates the clips. Nothing's playing because they're just envelope clips to the, to the cutoff. So next, I will make my looper. And I'm just going to pick any scene horizontally I want and I'm going to do a couple of assignments here. First thing I'm going to do is using my keyboard hold shift and press Q that will activate that clip and then I'm going to press Q without shift on the stop clip button. Um, with, and then in the middle of that I'm going to also have a MIDI assignment that's to the same exact no, that's to the pad below the pad that's the stop button. Okay. So I have this note starting the recording and stopping the recording. 
when I hit this note, it activates that clip, deletes it, and then stops the channel. Okay? Stopping the channel is required because you have to activate the clip so you don't hit delete on whatever other clip you're on. So I can be over here, now it's technically activated an envelope clip, you'll see. But then when I hit delete, first it jumps to this specific one, deletes it, and then stops the thing from re-recording because it was activated. So that's pretty much how that works. And um, I can do a little performance. Um, recording in MIDI, now these envelope clips are separate, so it's not going to save your envelopes, which may be nice because we can lay down a bass line separate. Now, if you wanted, to, <clears throat> if you wanted to record your performance of that wobble, then it's a matter of grabbing your loop as audio uh, through a resample technique. Uh, after it comes out of the massive channel, okay? I hope that helps.